Hey guys, I'm Suits. I've come up with a new video on Extremozymes. If you like this video, hit thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So Extremozymes. What are Extremozymes? What are Extremophiles? Those are the organisms that thrive and survive in harsh and extreme conditions, right? Extremozymes are those enzymes that are produced by these Extremophiles. Extremozymes expand the limits of biocatalysis and speeds up the biochemical reactions. These are very useful in biotech industries. These extremozymes are hard to be cultured. They are metabolically active only in harsh environments. Extremophiles have 16 srRNA gene sequences that make them unique. So all the time I say extreme conditions. So what are those extreme conditions? Like high temperature or low temperature, low pH or high pH and pressure like more than 500 atmospheres and radiations like UV radiations etc. Absence of oxygen, salinity, high salinity, high acidity etc. These extremozymes are naturally stable and exhibit optimum activities even under harsh conditions. The adaptations are specific to the extremophiles and the surrounding environmental conditions in which they thrive. Now let's go on one by one. Psychrophiles. These extremophiles live in extreme cold temperatures like less than minus 5 degrees Celsius. They live in ice caps, mountains, glaciers, icebergs, etc. Adaptations of psychrophilic enzymes. Alterations in amino acid composition of proteins allows them for better conformational mobility in the protein. And there is less number of disulfide linkages, hydrogen bonds, metal binding sites, weaker interactions, etc. There is decreased hydrophobicity of the core but increased hydrophobicity of the protein surface. A decreased secondary structure but increase in loop number and size are seen. And there is increased solvent interactions also. Applications of psychrophilic enzymes. These are used in biotransformation like methylases, amino transferases and alanine resumes. And Proteases, lipases, amylase and cellulase are used in detergent formulation and in cold washing. Proteases and keratinases are used in low temperature dehairing of skin. Beta-galactosidase is commonly used for lactose hydrolysis. And again cellulases, amylase, protease are used in textile processing. And some of them are used in extraction and clarification of fruit juices. And proteases are used in tenderization of meat and for taste improvement of refrigerated meat. Amylase, xylenase and protease are used in improvement of bakery products. Lastly, dehydrogenases are used for environmental biosensors. Thermophiles and hyperthermophiles. These are the extremophiles that live in extreme high temperatures. Thermophiles live in volcanic vents, hydrothermal vents, hot springs, etc. They survive in temperatures more than 1 to 1 degree Celsius. Adaptations of thermophilic enzymes. Some of the specific structural features adopted by thermophilic enzymes are to function effectively and optimally at high temperatures, right? Yeah. They have highly conserved sequences of amino acids and reduced amount of glycine residues and higher content of hydrophobic amino acids and again reduced amount of polar amino acids. The proteins are densely packed with increased hydrophobicity at the protein core and decreased protein surface area. When we see the applications of thermophilic enzymes, most of them are used in food and beverage industries. They are almost hydrolases. We see that amylases and polonase are used for starch hydrolysis and glucose isomerase is used for preparation of fructose based syrups and lactase are used for lactose hydrolysis and amylase xylenase are used in baking and brewing industries and also for making digestive aids and cellulase, esterase, lipase, lactase, xylenase are again used for pulp and paper industries and esterase and lipase are used in pharmaceutical industries. And some of the extremozymes are also used in molecular biology like tag polymerases and code polymerases and PFU polymerases and deep vent polymerases. These tag polymerases are extracted from Thermus aquaticus and cord polymerases are extracted from Thermococcus cordocarensis. You can see this picture of fermentation plant where hypothermophiles are grown. Most of the hypothermophiles are chemolithoautotrophic and these are the energy yield reactions of hypothermophiles. And in this picture you can see that Thermus thermophilus are grown on cellulose plate as well as agar plate.
which was kept at 80 degrees Celsius. Halophiles These are the extremophiles that survive in high salinity conditions. They live in Sola, Salton's, Marshy, Lagoon's, Hyperalkaline Lakes. Adaptations of Halophilic Enzymes These haloenzymes have high acidic amino acid content on their protein surface, like glutamic and aspartic acid surface residues. Low Lysine Content Also, there is relatively low hydrophobicity at the core of the protein and increased salt bridge formation. When we see their applications, proteases are used for soy production and for fish sauce fermentation and also for waste treatments. Cellulase are used for biofuel production and beta-lactamase is used in food and dairy industries and alkaline phosphatase is commonly used for dephosphorylation of nucleotides and proteins and the restriction enzymes and nucleases like DNAs and RNAs are used in molecular biology. The enzyme ferrodoxin in Halocula japanica helps in essential functions for halo adaptations. Alkaliphiles are the extremophiles that are found in alkaline regions like pH more than 9. Examples like Halorhodopsida halochloris. Alkaliphilic enzymes can be isolated from alkaline hot springs, soda lakes and alkaline ponds. In this picture, you can see how the reactions occur in soda lakes due to these alkali files. Most of the alkaliphilic enzymes are hydrolytic enzymes like amylase, cellulase, protease, catalase, xylenase, etc. Hence, they are used in many purposes. This graph shows the effect of pH on enzyme activity of the alkaline protease. The properties of alkaline protease are enlisted below. Acidophiles. These are the extremophiles which live in high acidic environment. They live in pH less than 2. Example is Ferroplasma acidophilum. Some of the acidophilic enzymes are intracellular and some are extracellular. They are used in biofuel production from acidophilic cellulases and xylenases for hydrolysis. Food industries uses acid-stable glucoamylases. Some of the acidophilic enzymes are used for biobleaching also. These acidophiles are commonly found in sulfuric pools, geysers and gastrointestinal tract. Barophiles or they will also call it as pyzophiles. These are the extremophiles which live under high pressure like pressure more than 500 atmosphere. One of the example is halomonas. Barophilic enzymes are isolated from microbial sources like pyrococcus thermus species. These enzymes can be studied in the stages of infancy. They can be used in biotechnology industries and they are used in microbially enhanced oil recovery process and also used in high pressure bioreactors. Metallophiles. These are the extremophiles that are found in heavy metals. They are commonly found in industrial sediments, wastes and biofilm on gold grains. They have a plasmid mediated heavy metal resistance. One of the example is Cupria vides metallidurans. Metallophilic enzymes grow under very high metal concentration in the environment. They can be isolated from metal waste, sediments or soil from industries with high contents of heavy metals. Enzymes from metallophiles have been found to be useful for heavy metal bioremediations purposes. Radiophiles. These are the extremophiles that can tolerate high radiations. They can survive cold, dehydration, vacuum and acid conditions. Hence, they are also known as polyextremophiles. They are found in elephant dung and granite in Antarctic dry valleys. One of the example is Dinococcus radiodurans. They can survive high ionizing UV radiations and the radiophilic enzymes were isolated from nuclear plants on areas which are rich in nuclear waste. The mechanism of ability to withstand high radiation involves a unique arrangement in cellular DNA which enables rapid repair of DNA caused by radiation. Currently, there are no specific applications of these enzymes, but genetic engineering methods are used to express desired radiophilic genes in suitable host to see the applications in bioremediation of radionuclear waste. Methanogens are a group of extremophiles which live in the areas where there is nil oxygen or less amount of oxygen. They are commonly found in marshy areas, ruminant animals and wetlands. 
Methanogens such as Methanobacterium ruminatum are used to produce methane in biogas plants. They produce the methane gas from water and carbon dioxide. Microaerophiles these are the extremophiles that grow in very low oxygen concentration. One of the examples is Campylobacter jejuni. They require 5% of oxygen only. Their enzymes require oxygen as terminal electron acceptor. And these enzymes produced by microaerophiles are used in anaerobic fermentation. So these are all the common extremozymes that are produced by the respective extremophiles. Now I'm going to explain some of the points using images. This graph shows the effect of NaCl concentration on extremozyme activity in halophiles. This image shows how the researchers are collecting extremophiles in Iceland. Here they are sampling the hydrothermal vents. This image shows the anaerobic culture of pyrodictium species in deep sea water. This image shows the activity of beta-galactosidase which is a psychrophilic enzyme. This is the image of code polymerase in its crystal form. This picture depicts the sediment sampling of barophiles at Marina Trench. This graph shows inactivation and unfolding of DNA ligase with rise in temperature. This is two-phase biotransformation or bioconversion by the help of extremozymes. This graph depicts the growth rate of extremophiles according to the temperature. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment section. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.